wanted to give a quick explanation of current flow in a circuit so it's easier for everyone to understand how a circuit works. Here we have a battery and the electricity from the battery when we're using it to power a circuit that flows from negative to positive. And inside the battery it flows from positive to negative. Usually we're not concerned with that unless we're charging it up because when we're charging it up we have to reverse the current flow on the outside to get it to reverse on the inside. So current flows from negative to positive on the outside. Now as far as circuit diagrams go they're all drawn in the water analogy. The diode in this picture, this is a uh, check valve for water. This is the valve part that moves. This is the valve seat, if that makes sense. It's also just like a valve in an engine. As the pressure increases here, the valve lifts away from the seat, letting current flow in that direction. And the same holds true with the uh, transistor diagrams, where you see the arrow here. There should be a valve seat right there. That'll make it a little easier to understand the circuit diagrams. That's how you can tell the current flow in a circuit diagram between the, the diodes and your positive or negative connections of the battery. Give another look at uh, Laser Saber's Super Jewel Ringer 3.0, which I used in one of my previous videos. This inner coil is the bucking coil. I use 27 gauge on there. This is my source battery which is 12 volt and I'm going to charge an 18 volt cordless drill battery. So here's laser saber circuit here. Like I said the bucking coil is there. Now this section over here is a charge circuit. All it is is a two diodes. I have a cap here which I don't think you really need that and I got the battery here. Now the battery you could put any voltage you want in there as long as you're able to get enough potential across here. The way the diodes are there the current can't flow backwards into the circuit. It can only be charged. Now this is a negative to negative which is something that Cool Jewel had mentioned earlier this year. Like I said, this is an 18 volt battery, but with the cap, just the cap and not the battery, the voltage in the cap will rise to about 34 volts. And that's with the uh, 4 watt LED light that I have here. If I put a 15 watt incandescent, I believe this goes up around 70 volts. I'll have to try that again. But what I think is happening here is the uh, the pulses that you're getting in the circuit here are creating a vacuum across here which creates a drop in pressure that allows the current to flow for charging. These are the meters for the charge battery. I got the amps here and the volts and this is the source battery you got amps and volts. And I have this cap shorted right now, so this is the voltage in the battery, in the charge battery. About 
have 1.34 amps going in, 11.8 volts, 330 milliamps in the charge, and 20.2 volts. see if I just connect this battery voltage rises and the cap gets close to 34 volts now you can see the current draw from the source goes up when you're doing the charging I'm going to show you what the incandescent bulb does for voltage just across the cap. And we got 20 volts in the battery. And you can see we got 32.8 volts across the cap. That's what this 4 watt LED bulb. Now, this is a 15 watt incandescent bulb. Oh, 82 volts in climbing. That's only a 63 volt cap. We've seen that energy can flow uphill from a low state to a higher state. Now we're going to look at some ways we can make improvements on the efficiency. I ran this charge battery down a little bit. We're at 15.3 now. So what I've done is I removed the light bulb from the circuit and I replaced that with a 47k resistor now I'll add in uh, some watt measurements for these so we're charging up the battery now I think I'm going to add another 47k in parallel across that one. We'll see if we can get this charging a little faster. So now I have two 47k resistors in parallel across there. charge battery has 110 milliamps the source is 240 milliamps So to improve our efficiency, we're going to get rid of this bulb. And we're going to go with the resistor there. Uh, I got 247K resistors there. Now we're going to look at, see what else we can do to improve this. Because right now all we are is in... Uh, charge mode. We're not running any kind of light. So 
we're still moving energy uphill. Now for this next part I'm going to leave the 247Ks in here because I want current flow, a little bit of current flow. And looking at where to put a light in here, an LED, and from our previous part in the video you've seen that this capacitor can reach some pretty high potentials when that battery is removed. So we have our 12 volt source starting out here and that cap can reach a high potential here which is much higher than our charge battery. So we're able to bring energy up to a higher state now can we capture that energy falling down again? In order to do that, we're going to put an LED right here. And we're going to see what kind of potential we get here and here. So right now I have the uh, voltmeter here across the capacitor. So our energy is flowing in here charging up this cap to 27.3 volts. Now the LED has a breakover voltage of 7.5 so we're using that higher state of energy here and still getting flow through the LED because we have a lower state here in the battery. We're at 28 volts across the capacitor. And our battery voltage is 19.9. Check uh, across the LED the voltage. We have eight volts across the LED. So there will be our watts for the LED. capacitor voltage and the battery voltage So this last test that I did, we had 2.7 watts of power going in from the source and the charge battery restored 1.2 watts which is 44%. The LED, I took the watt consumption as voltage across times the current of the LED. I'm not so sure that's the proper way of measuring an LED's power consumption. I'm wondering whether depending on how you measure it where the consumption is actually taking place. Is it in the LED or is it in the external resistance in the circuit? 
A while back I did a video of an LED in series with a motor. There would be a breakover voltage for the LED and when current started flowing through there to the motor and the motor wasn't under load, you would have a voltage on the motor. Now when you put a load on the motor, that voltage would drop there and the resistance would become the LED and you would get a rise in voltage across the LED meaning that now becomes a resistor. When you did that, that's when the heat mode would start kicking in on the LED. You would still have plenty of brightness on it before you put the load on the motor but when you put the load on the motor the LED get, did get somewhat brighter but the voltage would rise across the LED. That's why I'm wondering how exactly should you measure an LED for power consumption. There's probably a need for a video on that, anyone wishing to tackle that. I'm not sure exactly how you would go about measuring a device that the current increases. It's not like measuring a regular resistance device like a incandescent bulb. Thanks for watching.